you know, we have what we need already, right? We all, we know that we have what we need inside of us. It's just peeling back those layers and trusting ourselves and getting to know ourselves and then witnessing when you are in that, that space, how things happen for you because your alignment is there and you start to flow um, and it's just easier and more enjoyable in general in life. And I truly believe you can take that and capture that in a work environment as well. Um, again, because then you, your people are thriving and and enjoying life and they're wanting to be there and they're the best versions of themselves when they're at work and when they go home. Welcome to the Rich Life Realization Podcast. This is your host, Rich Life. Yes, that's really my name. And we're going to explore powerful conversations with phenomenal guests in order to spark realizations and insights that guide you toward enriching your life. Welcome to the Rich Life Realization Podcast, Dale Wickeiser, and she is a phenomenal friend, and she's a business coach who helps technical managers learn to be outstanding, authentic leaders. So she teaches clients how to apply management practices in their daily lives. Hi, Dale. Hey, Rich. How are you today? I'm fabulous. Lovely. <laughs> lovely. I, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the invite. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Yeah. We'll have a fun conversation. We will see where it goes. It'll be this natural unfoldment. And one of the things that you were talking about before we, we started filming was this unfoldment of, of goals too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think one of the things I've learned over my years um, in personal life as well as professional life is goals. Um, and you can use the word goals or dreams or intentions, right? Mm -hmm. um, we all kind of have different ways to phrase that. But wherever, whatever use your word you're using to set where you want to go or something you want to change or a purpose in your life. Um, and I truly believe understanding that is key to um, joy in your life. Um, and if you have that compass, that helps you line up your professional world as well as your personal. Um, I don't believe those are always separate or should be separate. Um, yeah. And I think traditionally in a business world, we really do um, separate those. And I believe that a lot of the skills that we can learn, um, whether it's in the management world or the professional, those don't need to be separate. We can bring those together and create an alignment between who we are, um, our goals that we're trying to reach. And if we're in the right organization and in the right position, then we're in alignment with their goals as well and their values. And I think that's where the real magic happens for both uh, employees and businesses and really community. Wow. Well, and there is that, that call to kind of have this delineation between like work life and, and home life where you almost have to be this separate person. Yeah. I, I I like that you can you can take things that you learn in your home life, things that you know as maybe a parent or a friend, and you're applying them to the business world and vice versa too. I, I really liked in your bio where you talked about how you apply those management skills and then really they can apply them to their personal life. Tell us more about that. Yeah, I will tell you, um, Rich, you know, I, I had divorced parents, uh, you know, kind of one of those childhoods, those real childhoods that a lot of us have. So I maybe didn't learn a lot of great um, relationship mm -hmm. skills and communication skills. Um, and maybe in my first marriage, didn't apply those, didn't understand them. Um, but I will tell you, once I went, um, to school and went into management and worked on my leadership degree. Uh, the things that I learned there about relationships, communication, expectations, intentions, I was able to apply those um, in all aspects of my life, whether it was my own family dynamics, um, raising my son, 
um, as well as work, right? So I'm a real efficient person. So if I'm going to learn a lesson and I think it's a lesson worth learning and applying myself to, I think you can apply it to your personal and your work, right? I mean, we're not two separate human beings. So relationships exactly. are relationships, right? Um, or they should be. If we're actually connecting with human beings at the office and not just numbers, um, then they are relationships and it is communication and self-awareness and all those things that we want in our personal life and relationships, those work really well in a work environment. And if you can imagine, if we could apply those in a work environment so that people could actually enjoy their day and build community and make a difference there as well in their personal life, that's like, that's like the best of everything, right? Yeah. That's the <laughs> cheer. That's the cheery on top. <laughs> yeah. And, and why not? Why do those have to be separate? Why can't we find a way that we align those? Um, and so the things that we're learning and the skills that we're learning can come together. Yeah. And there's, there's a piece to this, because I think that there's, there's a, a delineation between this authenticity and also this need to code switch. Like you're you're not going to talk with your your five year old the same way that you're going to talk with a uh, an employee or <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Right. spot on spot on right right I'm, I'm gonna, you know going to give your six year old their annual performance review how have you done right yeah, right I going to do that but but what is one of the things that we do learn in management is feedback and feedback is important and setting expectations is important. And that's true in our family life, right? That we can apply to our six-year-old, right? That we have this kind of an expectation and feedback, positive feedback, you know, on ways to improve. So yes, you're spot on. Yeah. It's a different lingo. You got to be able to adjust the language a little bit there. Uh, but yeah, then we can apply it. Yeah. And, and you can still be authentic in, in both situations. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you know, trans, you know, being transparent, being authentic, that doesn't mean just dumping everything out there. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, right. We have authentic self and maybe it's more so authentic one way when we're in the office. Right. It's a little more professional. Uh, right. We're a little more mindful of strategy and maybe where the business is going, but that's not being inauthentic at all. Um, so you you can be authentic in both. Now, you don't need to bring everything in your personal life and, and bring it all across your work life, just as we don't need to take all of our work stuff and dump it in our personal lives, yeah. right? Yeah. But there is an overlap, a healthy overlap that we should be able to feel. Like if you're if you've come to work and you've had a cancer diagnosis, you should be able to share that if you want with your boss, with your coworker, and not feel like you have to shove that down. Um, you spend a lot of time at the office. You know, that that's a support community as well. Um, and hopefully you're in an organization that has a culture that believes in that. Yeah. And and actually this this might be a, a point that you help other people with. I'm curious about this because I think that there's that that hesitancy to blend the two work and home life together because there you can you can have stresses go into another you you might bring your work home with you like you talked about or bring your home to work with you like you talked about and so people are like we have to compartmentalize yeah and and maybe there's a value to that but also there's a value to you bring your work home with you you're stressed about it you're thinking about it you're overthinking about it and it's yeah. just bothering you and i bet a lot of our listeners experienced that i know that i did when i was working full time where i would i'd be mulling over work at home yeah how do you right. help clients with that yeah so you know we're not just robots right we're not going to just mm -hmm. turn it off when we come home um, it's interesting. I work with a few individuals and, and they're in those spots in their career where they're advancing, they're taking on more responsibility, but they have young children at home um, and they come home and they know they're not being their best self for yeah. their, their children, right? They're, they're short. They don't have any patience. They're exhausted. So how about if we acknowledge that 
And then we create a transition time or a transition activity or something that allows you to switch, right? To to process what you need to. Maybe it's 30 minutes, you know, is that a great time for you to go to the gym and work out and get all that work stuff out, get that anxiety out of your body and then come home. And yeah, maybe that's 30 minutes less with your children. But if you show up as the best version of you with your children and you actually really see them and you're not short tempered and impatient, right? Isn't, isn't that even better right now? We're talking about quality over quantity and being really present in that situation. So it's just a, some of it's self-awareness, exactly like you said, Rich, you got to, you acknowledge, you learn to acknowledge that that's the space you're in. Yeah. Okay. Now, what are we going to do about it? What's your intention? What do you want to be? Who do you want to show up as when you um, greet your six-year-old, right? <laughs> you want them to know that they're the most important person in the world to you, not just another irritant at the end of a day. Um, so a lot of that just goes to recognizing that and then building in some practices that work for you. Maybe it's on your way home, you listen to a 30-minute podcast um, that just helps you transition into that better version of you when you get home. I did not do a great job of it um, as well. I don't I don't think we often do when we're in it. Um, I want to be the person I wish I had coaching me at those times in my life. I could have used yeah. that coach, right? That would have said, hey, take 30 extra minutes for yourself, journal, meditate, go for a walk, and then show up for your son. You'll show up as a better mother for him um, if you do that. And then you're going to feel good about that because a lot of what happens, I think, you know, men and women, we don't feel like we're doing a great job at the office and we don't feel like we're doing a great job at home, uh, right? And we start beating <laughs> ourselves up. Yeah, um, yeah the, there's there's things we can do um, so that you can feel like you're you're being the best version of you as a mom or a dad, as well as when you go into the office. But it's not like anybody trains that, right? Or gives us the mindset or helps us think about that transition period. You're either, oh, this is how you can be a better employee. This is how you can do your personal development. But how do we bring that together so I can transition from a, a good a good employee, good manager? to a good mom as well when I get home. Yeah, that that space is so important too. Yeah. I I had an insight recently that I think it's a metaphor that I think is really applicable here if you don't mind I'll, I'll introduce it. Absolutely. That I, I thought of that we are kind of like this spring, like a a car sp shock spring or one that's on a bike. Mm -hmm. And we have the ability, we have this, just this natural ability to, to be compressed and then bounce back. We have mm -hmm. this, it's like this natural springiness to us that, that something scary might happen. Like we, we saw the tiger in the forest and we would, we would compress and then, and then bounce back when the tiger was gone. And that we then have the ability to continue to keep that compressed mm -hmm. with our thinking, with our ruminating, with our worry, our fears, like you were talking about, of even our thoughts of like, I'm, I'm being a terrible, you know, boss, the judgments. And, and when we compress the spring, there's tension. And you can feel that like even even maybe right now that tension shows up as like body aches it shows up as as maybe emotions anger maybe it shows up at being short with your kids yeah your jaws clenched yeah, yeah you were you were just yeah yeah <laughs> and and we have this natural resiliency that this bouncing back and, and that's what I like to talk about with our innate wellness. That when we remove the weights, when we can let go of them or see mm -hmm. through them, then we'll just spring back. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. And we're so much more um, creative and innovative and yes. alive, right? At that point. Yes. And that's the other piece. When we're feeling that way, um, you know, we show up so much better. 
at all aspects in our lives, right? As an employee, now I'm innovative, I'm excited, I'm problem solving, I help create a good culture. When I'm home with, you know, your children, you're creative and you're present and you're loving and yeah, but you got to be able to bounce, got to be able to bounce back. Yeah. The, but one of the issues is then you you can kind of add to the compression if you're like, oh no, I'm compressed. You're like, oh yeah. no. Oh no, I'm stressed. Let it go. Yeah. <laughs> How do you, I let it go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's 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 almost like this acceptance, like you were talking about, the the recognition. Yeah, yeah. It's that awareness, right? Just yeah. Be- mindful and aware that that's how you're feeling and I love the way you bring into the physical part I'm right because if we do just sit you know maybe when when we leave the office or we're in the car you know Mm -hmm. if you just do a mind a body sweep and just say like wow because you probably realize just how tense and tight you really are and you're going to carry that when you walk in the door and people are going to want things from you and you just boom 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 right you're just trying to not explode (laughs) <laughs> right is it just like yeah well <laughs> and so you know even just a couple of minutes of breath work right we know that that flips right um helps us with all of that just a little bit to to kind of get that edge off of us and preferably we learn to do that versus you know the after um after work drink right you know, yeah. I'm of the age yeah. where it's like, yeah. oh, you know, you, you know, go out with your friends and, and have a beverage or you get home and you're going to have a beer or a glass of wine. And not that, that that's bad, but maybe there's some healthier alternatives to that. One of the things that I felt like I was seeing um, towards the end of uh, one of the positions I had was so much stress and so many people on anxiety medicine, um, really so many people drinking at a level that probably didn't even realize when the last time was they didn't have a drink at the end of the day to help them kind of cope through that. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's some other coping tools um, that I don't think we talk about um, early enough in life for personal life, but also for the work life, right? Because it's acceptable uh, to have those after hours drinks or those business meetings and and all of that. That just becomes an acceptable form. Um, but maybe there's a, a healthy transition state in there yeah because because people get that compressed and feeling and then that tension and then they're they're trying to kind of escape from it they're like i'm gonna get out from under it and i'm gonna use that that's in a lot of times where addictions can come in not Mm -hmm. not that it's you know addictions can also come from trauma it can come from other Mm -hmm. other places as well and people see that oh if I do this that that releases it momentarily Mm -hmm. but really they're (laughs) you're you're placing the weight on yourself the the weight is made of your own thoughts yeah yeah and and those those can be as heavy or or as light as as you want them to be Mm-hmm. I come from a world of, out of technology. That's where most of my yeah yeah ground is in tech, right? So the way we would equate this is it's it's troubleshooting. So what you're really trying to do is get to the root problem analysis, mm-hmm. right? If you're taking, if you're doing other things to just cope, those are symptoms, and it's the same with healthcare, right? You're wanting to get to the root of the problem. What is the root of the problem? Are you um, not being your authentic self? Do mm-hmm. you not? Uh, you know, or do you know your values, but maybe you are working in an organization that doesn't have the same values. And so, you know, you're kind of repressed or, you know, tense all day long when you're, when you're doing that. Um, But you got to go deep, right? To do that, you've kind of, you've got to know who you are. You've got to be self-aware. What do you want? Um, And I think when we are leaders, that's what makes good leaders. That's what we recognize in a leader is somebody who knows themselves, who is authentic um, and not not slick, not, you know, scripted and all those things. Mm-hmm. I think when we resonate with somebody who's authentic, whether it's in any role, but definitely I've seen it in leadership, 
um, where people have tried to lead, but they're not being their authentic selves. They're just kind of spouting maybe what they've read, uh, but you can tell yeah. there's not an alignment happening there. And if you can have that alignment, what you truly believe, actions, words, and what you do, people resonate with that. They can feel safe and they can trust in that. Um, so getting to that root so that you can build on it in personal <laughs> life and in work, right? Life is key. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like the metaphor of a tree where, where you can try and fix the problem at the level of the leaves and the branches and you, you paint the leaves green and <laughs> it's super temporary. So when you are looking for the root, what are you looking for? Yeah, so you're having to do a lot of whys. I think we all learn that um, in different aspects of life, but definitely in, in coaching. Why did I make that decision? Why do I want that? And it's just, it's a process of elimination almost, right? To, to prune it down, to narrow it down. So in, in troubleshooting, we do that, right? We like, we might try this. We might try this. That's not working. And we just have to keep going deeper and deeper to understand what's really going on in there. So, you know, maybe... Why do you feel the need, uh, you know, when you come home, um, why are you cranky and upset? Well, okay, I'm cranky and upset because I had a really long day. I'm cranky mm -hmm. and upset because my boss came unglued on me. I'm cranky and upset because I had an employee that didn't listen to me. You know, we have all these reasons. Okay, well, that's great. So then we're going to backtrack. Why is that upsetting you? What did you do about that? Is it upsetting you because now you have to handle it? and you're overwhelmed, and you don't have the time to handle it. Okay, so now we're talking about some time management challenges, right? So you see how we're just going to keep coming deeper and deeper, all right? So now let's look at time. Let's talk about time at work. What are your goals? What are your priorities? Um, you know, are you efficient in what you're doing? Are there things that you can delegate Right. Mm -hmm. Now we start talking about some of those management principles. Are there some things that you can delegate? OK, well, maybe I could do that. OK, so maybe now you've claimed back time. So you have the time to hire that replacement employee. Uh, right. So you're walking it all the way, all the way back to what is your real issue? OK, maybe you, you aren't good at time management. Maybe you're not good at delegation. Um, OK, why not? right? Maybe I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Maybe I don't know my intentions mm -hmm. now, right? So you're going to just keep whittling it, it down and back. And maybe it comes down to the fact that you are just overwhelmed at work. You have too much on your plate. It's not realistic to expect that you can do that. Okay, that's great. Now that's something I can work with. Let's put together a plan for your boss or a justification for additional staff that can help you get some of that off of your plate so that you can do your job well, right? So there's just different ways of kind of slicing it and dicing it and getting down to a problem that you can develop a plan for that you can fix and then move forward. Yeah. It's yeah. So, it's so important to take actions and yeah. also take actions from a place of understanding. Yeah. So that that's really, once... I, I think there's a quote, once you know the problem, you're halfway to fixing it. Like really understanding the problem though. Like you talked about, it, it comes from, from being open to that understanding, not, a, not necessarily an intellectual understanding of it. Yeah, it can that, be both, right? Our intellectual yeah, and yeah. kind of our heart understanding, right? Yeah. I mean- I'm going to jump back in. Maybe the reason you don't delegate well is you're uncomfortable telling somebody else what to do, Yeah. right? Maybe you don't like to be told what to do, right? So now we're coming back to, okay, it's about you. Okay, why do you struggle with an authority person telling you what to do? And right, you just keep going deeper into some of that. Um, but it's asking why. Why does that upset you? Why did I respond so strongly to that? Mm -hmm. You know, why does that person get under my skin? Um, you know, because generally it's a reflection. It's a study back in you, right? <laughs> and and self-awareness of yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's when you can have that awareness. Wow, you can you can move forward and you can start to you can start to drop 
some of the some of the the underlying issues that you've had before that were keeping you in that state of tension that were keeping you from from being that that unpressed spring that you talked about where where it, and now I'm going to make a pun uh, but <laughs> like where it springs forth like a yeah. like a, a, an underground spring where then it can flow and that's what that leader those leaderships that are authentic that's what they're in tune with mm -hmm. they're in tune with that spring yeah because they know who they are and they're letting it spring forward come mm -hmm. out they have a purpose um and and it's clear they have a clear path right yes. of what they're doing and it also speaks to in releasing that tension taking those weights off the top letting you spring forward that's what we're also talking about your creativity right your curiosity your innovation right like all the really cool stuff but if you're so restricted and under those weights you you know odds are you're not doing that i remember one of the best things that happened to me as i was kind of getting to the end of realizing this uh this position was no longer a good fit for me was my son was in college and he made the comment to me and he's like, mom, I don't remember the last time you told me a new book you read or something new you were trying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, to me, I interpreted that. It's like, I was no longer curious. I was exhausted. You know, I'm surviving. I'm not thriving. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be back where we get to the the overlap of our personal life and our professional life. Is that an example that I want to model for my son, that that's what life is all about is just surviving it. Or do I want to show that that's thriving it? And the same when I come to work, you know, your, your employees can tell when you're just checking the boxes versus yeah. that you're really there because you really care about them and you care about a business and you're bringing out the best in them. Um, it just doesn't serve any purpose to anyone when we're not in our thriving mode, right? That's just kind of how we serve the world is to thrive, whether it's in a work environment or in our personal environment. <laughs> and that, that thriving nature is innate. It's, it's in everybody. Every single person has it. You have it. I have it. The people listening have it. Even some of the, 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 the leaders that you're like, oh my gosh, the, <laughs> maybe some of the bosses that you've had in the past, they had it, but they they covered it up. Yeah, yeah. With, with that, that those weights that we talked about. Yeah, you know, we say that in in uh, you know our professional world, every employee that you hire hires because they want to show up and do a good mm -hmm. job. Right. They don't show up because they want to fail or they want to go home feeling horrible during the day. Yeah. Right. They want to show up. They want to thrive, um, you know. And so what are we doing to put the weights on them? You know, and what can we peel mm -hmm. off to let them be their best authentic self? And if you line their best authentic self up with the position, the role, whatever that is that needs to be done, then it's effortless, right? They get to come in and enjoy their day. They're doing something they love. They do it really well for an organization. And then the organization gets to thrive. But yeah. if your people aren't thriving, God's a good, your organization is not thriving. Yeah, yeah. Because really an organization is the people. Yeah, it's an organism, right? Organization, it's an organism, yeah. Yeah. right? Made of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta get in at a cellular level and, and build it up and, and feed it the right energy and you know let it ripple out I also liked how you talked about that that it doesn't have to be hard because mm -hmm. I think that we especially in our society we're 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 valuing this kind of grind culture and yeah. this like kind of like make it make it make it I'm going to push myself as hard as I can until I'm so freaking burned out that I can't mm -hmm. even stand it. And yeah. what that's, that, that's not telling you that you're doing awesome. It's actually telling you that you're not in that alignment that we just talked about and that 
not that every single thing has to be easy, but that that there's this element of naturalness once you're aligned, once you have those those weights removed, you've mm-hmm. you've either seen through them or you've dropped them in some way. And yeah. that, that that's really your cue when it feels like it's stressful, it's a grind. You're mm-hmm. just not in that alignment space. Yeah. And that's spot on, Rich, because it can be easy once you've experienced it, it's just a natural flow, Mm -hmm. right? And then you learn when you're out. Then once you understand what alignment is, it's much easier to identify when it's out, right? Like a car in alignment versus when it's out. When it goes straight, it's easy. When it's not, you know, you're pulling it back all the time and it's like, what? Mm -hmm. What's going on here? But yeah, I I have to snicker a little bit when you talk about how we, um, the grind, right? To prove ourselves, you know, I remember a time when we used to come into the office and say, oh, you know, how many hours did you put in last night? How many, you know, how many trips have you been on this week? Or, you know, oh, I worked 20 hours and I flew back here and I haven't had any sleep. And it was like a badge of honor, right? (laughs) (laughs) To say, oh, I am this exhausted. I am this stressed. And it's like, wow, when, when did it become that that's what we were striving for? Um, to wear ourselves out and to wring ourselves out and to, you know, to, you know, instead of being full, that we deplete ourselves versus filling ourselves up. Because we know when we're depleted, personally or professionally, we are not filling up anybody else's buckets or taking care of anybody else. We don't have our oxygen mask on. So, yeah, but it is that that is some cultures. That's just it. The grind, right? The 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 road warrior, the, the, the badge of suffering, the victim. Yeah, absolutely. Been there, done that. <laughs> and people identify with that. People yeah. will say, oh man, I, because it can be a, an adoption into the culture of the company so easily because you, you want success. You're trying to, to get that success. And I, I actually find that it's, it's ironic that especially long-term success is not going to come from that being in that grinding space, but it's going to come from being in that alignment space where that joy and that creativity can flow. And there's going to be natural connection between your team members Mm -hmm. when there's conflict, when there's, like backstabbing and he said she said kinds of things and mm-hmm. and drama the drama llama sh- rears <laughs> its head right yeah and you know we learn there's always going to be drama and there's always going to be some conflict so what we want to do just mm-hmm. as in our personal life we want to learn the skills to help us navigate that right yeah. Yeah. how do you have those difficult conversations so that you're not stewing about something for three days three weeks and it's eating at you and, and taking a toll on your health but you now have the tools to have a productive difficult conversation and feel good about it imagine going into a conversation like that and actually feeling good about it versus <laughs> you know freaking out and stressed over it yeah yeah there I go when when there's all of that drama i think that it's so easy to take it personally mm-hmm. that is one of the things that we are are so quick to do and when we can see that there's that there's other people who are probably actually hurting themselves and they're mm-hmm. operating from a space of fear and insecurity then we can not take it personally as easy. It's, it's that understanding gives the, the grace. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. That is so brilliant because if you can remove that, right. Instead of just reacting, create that space and respond um, and maybe put yourself in that other person's position and, and not just immediately assume it's always about you. Exactly. Yes. Right. Maybe they had this diagnosis. Maybe they have something else going on. And if your default filter can be giving them the grace or being curious versus defensive, mm. 
that will remove a lot of that drama um, and help build those connections. Because I think that's the other thing that's really um, important as well in, in life in general, whether it's your personal world or your professional, are those connections, right? And when we can be there for somebody who's maybe going through something that we didn't know, um, then we're serving them. We're making a connection and we're serving them, right? And it could be at the office, but you're serving them in their personal life, right? A lot of, there is no separation. And I know as a manager for years, you will be working with your people's personal issues because if they have a sickness in their family, they have a death in their family, you know, yeah. life comes in. Um, and if you can look at that, not as an annoyance or, oh, one more thing for you to deal with, but because you truly care about your employee and you truly care about that situation, it it serves them better. It builds a loyalty um, to you and the organization so that when you need them in a time, they are there for you. I've had great experiences um, with that over the years with individuals who, you know, I've tried to show up for them and then they'll show up for me, whether that's personal or at work. Those same yeah. principles apply, right? We're going going full circle. That same stuff applies. Yeah. 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 And one one little secret that I'll I'll share. Okay. Is, <laughs> one little it's a <laughs> it's a it's kind of one of the guides is that that our feelings our emotions can really convince us the reality of of how much they are a jerk face it's like it's confirming when we're taking it personally and we're really we're feeling the emotions that's they're they're con it feels like they're confirming the situation and how they're mean to us and, and how horrible it feels, but really it's, it's your thinking in the moment. And so when you can see that, then you can come from a place of curiosity. Yeah. Then you can uh, come from a place of, of understanding and maybe seeing, Oh, maybe they're feeling awful about this right now. And they're lashing out and they're hurting or something else is going on entirely. I've found that that if I slow down in my home life with with my my wife and she kind of is is mad at me for something and I slow down and I say wait a minute about 10 minutes later she's like well actually it's something else. I actually works really hard right now. I have a client who's who's struggling. And then I can be there for that instead, just like you were talking about. Yeah, we tell ourselves stories, right? If we're going to start creating a story, then yeah. we look for ways to validate that story. And the yes. story might be pure fiction. Um, but yeah, we can definitely get into that, that storytelling that, yeah, we assume. Um, and it'll be interesting exercise when people are doing that. How many times the story is wrong? What they're assuming is nowhere close to what's going on, right? If you, and I feel like the more you learn that and experience that, the more natural and easy it is for you to give that space and, and assume the opposite to start with. Just assume it has nothing to do with you rather than assume yeah. it does. Just flip it, right? Just flip it um, and start seeing how that feels and the difference you start making in other people's lives and the less stress you're bringing on to yourself. that that's that's transformative oh yeah absolutely the, absolutely the seeing it as the story is yeah okay, okay. So, and when when it feels bad that's when it's time to question the story and it's time to slow yeah. down yeah yeah it is it's time to slow down i always think you know we all have triggers so sometimes it's like if i'm reacting so strongly to something why why? What about me is causing me to react so strongly to something like that? Uh, there's a reason. And it's usually, you know, something about ourselves um, that we it's a lesson. There's always an opportunity there for a lesson for us to to grow and to learn. And and in those stories it's being presented to us. And I think in leadership and in management, that's kind of key. Instead of looking at things as a new um, a problem, another problem to be dealt with. There's a lot of learning opportunities for managers. And the reason that's important is because 
when the managers learn and grow, they make a difference on the employees. So if you're managing whatever, 10, 20, two employees, you're making a difference in their lives, right? Yeah. And the sooner you can learn and grow as yourself, you can help them learn and grow, right? And what an amazing ripple effect that now has, not just in an organization, but in the community. Um, so the the faster you can like recognize it and learn and be of service to other people, then they learn and are service to other people. Yeah. And and th there's also an element too of, of grace of I'm not as far as I want to be and that's okay. Yeah. Continue to learn and grow, but also has to have grace for yourself, for your own humanity. Because if you don't have that element, then you're not going to go as far. You're going to continue to judge yourself. And others. And yeah. others. Because that's one of the lessons that you become, you start learning in the self-awareness is that you've got to give yourself that grace mm -hmm. as often as you can. And then you coach others to give themselves <laughs> that grace, right? Um, yeah. In there. To take, to take one more weight off, right? Back to your spring, yes. right? One more weight off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think boundaries, um, I think sometimes we talk about in the beginning, Rich, we talked about the difference between your personal life and your professional life and trying to compartmentalize and stuff. I think the way we, a, a healthy word, a productive word we need to learn, and a lot of us never learn in the professional world, is setting boundaries, mm. right? Setting boundaries. And that's okay. That's not necessarily a bad thing to say no or that, you know, but we don't learn how to do it. We don't learn how to set boundaries um, that could help us with some of that stress and some of those weights. So that's another key aspect, I think, to the transitioning as well. So the boundaries might look like on Tuesdays, I pick up my kids at three o'clock. I've, I've set that expectation. That's important to me. That's what I do. Somebody asks me at 245 to do something. I say, and it's OK to say, you know, I would love to help you with that. I do have another commitment and then offer, you know, another option. Could we do it first thing in the morning? Could I get on the phone with you at eight o'clock tonight when my child is in bed? Um, if it's not urgent, then let's just take it up at our next meeting. Yeah. But yeah. you can't say those things, but you have to learn how. We have to, we have to be taught how to do that. And those are not things that traditionally we teach um, in management. Yeah. And and there's also, I think, an element of fear that that prevents us from from yeah. speaking out and, and stating our needs. Mm -hmm. And once we remove the fear, there's there's no issue with with saying, no, no, I I have my I have to go grab my kid. Hey, I do want to hear about it. Let's talk. Yeah. But but there's if we do have that fear, it's like, what are they gonna say? They're they're gonna think that I'm I'm not a good worker there I, I need to get my kid and then now there's this conflict because you're trying to please the kid too but but then my kid's going to be upset because I'm going to be late and then and now it becomes this kind of jumbled mess mm -hmm. and without if we can remove that weight of the fear then we can operate so yeah. much more so much better and you you also wanted to talk a little bit about like identity and how how that can align. Yeah. Yeah, I think that feeds into kind of how we try to separate our personal and our professional. Yes. Right? Because oh, I'm a mom. I'm a mom. I'm, you know, I'm a, a VP of I'm a professional person over here. Um and I think sometimes we lose our identity and I think women struggle, right? Because we kind of have this thing, oh, I, I'm going to be a good mom and a stay-at-home mom. Oh, I'm going to be a working mom. So we have this whole thing that plays out that we're never satisfied. We can never do enough, right? Um, but the concept that we can be both, I don't have to be a working mom, a stay-at-home mom. I don't have to be a, a vice president. For myself, it was about um, serving others, but I always knew, you know, kind of old school, I wanted the corporate ladder and I, I tied my identity to my work. Um, and then when I got to the spot where my career wasn't satisfying and I was out of alignment, honestly, I didn't even know who I was anymore yeah. because I had invested so much 
into my professional world, um, I, I wasn't a whole rounded person. I wasn't Dale the mom necessarily or Dale the friend or, you know, I was a workaholic and that was my identity. Mm -hmm. And when I stepped away from that, I did not know who I was. Right now mm -hmm. I'm better. Now I'm better. Now I know I'm a wife. I'm a mother. You know, I'm a professional, but it's one aspect of who I am. Um, so I do think we don't talk a lot about our identity. Um, it's not what we do, it's who we are, right? We need to remember I'm not defined by what I do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when we have children leave, now we're empty nesters. Now who are we? That's the opposite of that, right? Now who am I? <laughs> now what What am I? <laughs> and being comfortable with the fact that we can be, we are who we are, and we happen to also be these things, right? So I think when we go yeah. home at night, Yes. All right. I've been an executive or a manager making decisions. That's who I am. And I'm going to go home and I'm going to be a mom. And that's cool. And I am all of that. Right. That's why we can't show up at work just as a work person and pretend we're not a mom. And that's also a lot of times that we can't go home and pretend we're not a work person. Those stresses are still with us. Those things that we're still yeah. thinking about. So how do we bring those into harmony to bring a little peace for ourselves? right? When that's not, it's not what we have been taught. It's not what the examples are that are out there. So we want to bring those together in harmony, bring in the skills that help us both professionally and personally and how to apply those. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking a little bit about self-worth mm. and, and that really connects because we we have this idea of self-worth that is connected that we kind of tether to the things like jobs or, or being a good mom or the more that we, we tether our self-worth to all of these things in our lives, the more that we're pulled in all of these different directions. Yeah, yeah that's a great point. That is, that is, the pull, yeah, the friction, the tension, the yes. tension. It's like stretching it out now. <laughs> yeah, right. We're back to that tension. Like, We're pushing oh. down that spring. Yeah, yeah. That identity. Who who are we supposed to be? Um, yeah. Versus who are we? Yeah, you're 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 kind of pulled in the in this direction and then this, this direction and then you're just this stretched out rubber band and you are so intention in like have so much tension and there you have a lot of kinetic energy like it, you can snap but there's no potential energy there's there's no energy for you to to live in your potential yeah, I say that's brittle. Um, when I've been talking with yes. individuals who are in that space, I feel like you're brittle. It's it's easy for you to break when you go home to be upset by something because you're very brittle at this point, right? Yeah. You're not resilient. You you don't have that bounce. You've lost that spring. You're so tight, like you've said. You're so spread out that you are now just brittle, and it doesn't take a lot to make you snap. And frankly, a lot of times you don't like yourself. I know towards the end of um, my last career, I didn't like myself. I didn't feel like yeah. I was a kind person any longer. I wasn't a curious person. Um, I didn't like that. Uh, and I think most people don't like ourselves when we're depleted and brittle and, and you know, tense. Hmm. It's it's kind of funny because there's this this irony that that when you let go of all of those things, you can naturally kind of be good at them then. Yeah. If you want to be, it's, it's because you're coming that from that space of potential and cure creativity now. And abundance versus and, scarcity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not pulled in every direction. And so you can go in different directions. You're more agile. Yeah. You're, you're more connected with who you really are, which is, it's almost a subtraction problem, not an addition problem. Mm -hmm. But I love how you're, you're talking about it. You, you kind of 
take away this and this hat and this hat. And then you really are connected with yourself. And then you can you can go out and be those other things. It's it's a that too. Yeah. Yeah. You, I love the way you're saying it's a subtraction because, you know, we have what we need already, right? We all, yeah. we know that we have what we need inside of us. It's just peeling back those layers and trusting ourselves and getting to know ourselves and then witnessing when you are in that, that space, how things happen for you because your alignment is there and you start to flow um, and it's just easier and more enjoyable in general in life. And I truly believe you can take that and capture that in a work environment as well. Um, again, because then you, your people are thriving and, and enjoying life and they're wanting to be there and they're the best versions of themselves when they're at work and when they go home. Um, you know, and for me, I used to always, I'm like, what's my purpose as a manager? What am I doing here? You know what? Yeah. I have all these organizational, um, achievements I'm trying to do and goals I'm trying to meet. But at the end of the day, I want to make a difference in my employees' lives. I want them to go home feeling good about their day. I want them to go home and not snap at their wife or kick their dog or, you know, have that tension. You actually get to make that kind of a difference in people's lives um, if you're willing to do that. And it feels good. And it can feel good, too, because it helps you, right? Feeds right back onto yourself. Yeah, it's like this this fountain that feeds itself. Yeah, and what a great way to show up in the day. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, just some tools and tips and tricks here and there, and then then you can sustain it. But because that's the other thing we've talked about, um, you can't sustain long when you're that brittle, that tense, um, that thin. You can't sustain that. It will break at some point, and you either recognize. You either recognize you're on that journey and something isn't right, or it'll show up in a different way, right? And we all yeah. know what that looks like. Yeah. We know people, we are the people that that shows up unexpectedly and you're still going to deal with it. Um, so back to what you're saying, if you if you feel like, you know, you feel it in your shoulders, you feel it in your jaw, you feel it in the, you know, you observe how you're interacting with others and you really don't like the way you're interacting with other, that, that tells you something that tells you you're out of alignment. Now, what do you want to do about it? That's the question. What are you going to do about it? Because you've got to do something or it'll just keep going the way it's going. You've got to change something. Hmm. And what, what you were talking about too, that there's, there's this space that, that it comes from the, the space of, I like to call it innate wellness. Uh, you called it kind of this heart space. Yeah. And what I often suggest is, what if that space could tell you what to do? Mm -hmm. That it doesn't have to be a, it could be a technique, but a lot of people latch on to those and then they can be addicted to the techniques instead of the, the, yeah. the beer or whatever. And, yeah. and that can, I went down that road. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. That was I, <laughs> and, A lot of us have gone down that path. Yeah. Yeah. You, you almost, when it when it starts to feel like it's this compulsion this obsession of oh i i need to do this i need to i have to do my breathing or <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i have to be still i have to be still yes to and and that stresses you out you're like but i can't meditate i don't know what i'm doing i'm like and yeah. then <laughs> yeah yeah you know i think rich that's where we ask what works for us, right? So how do you be, how do you get still, if you will, get that monkey mind to calm down a little bit? And, you know, maybe that's going for a walk. You know, it doesn't have to, for me, I can't sit still until I've done something physical. Hmm. So, you know, a workout or maybe I'm walking in nature or a nice bike ride, right, is a nice way to kind of get some of that anxious energy out. And then your mind just kind of lets go, right? But it's not like forced. It just kind of a gentle flow into something that brings you joy. Because I think that's the other thing. It doesn't have to be just stillness and what's around me. 
if you can find a way to build in the things that bring you joy, that's where it's naturally at as well, because those are the things that show you that that's your innate in wellness and that's coming through when you're feeling your joy. Mm. So maybe it's coloring in a color book, you know, with your kids when you get home. Um, there's lots of different ways to build in that that still it's just kind of getting the other to stop so you can just be you a little bit more yeah. take off the weight yeah back to the weight take off the weight <laughs> and then of course we've got tools and techniques that can help but at the end of the day this is why it has to be authentic it has to be what works for you yeah, yeah. Um, you can train you can read all the books but you've got to figure out what works for you or work with somebody who can help you ask the questions to to find that in yourself yeah and, and it's kind of funny because the, the joy that you feel from drawing or yeah. walking, it's coming from you. Yeah. It's, it's not necessarily the activity. It's coming from inside you. Yeah. And you're just letting it come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, <laughs> Getting out of your own way. <laughs> you are. Yes. <laughs> You're getting out of your own way. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why we love children, right? If we're not crazy busy all the time, children play, right? They're just awesome. And so if there's a way you can embrace your children's play as kind of your joy and finding your way um, to just be, that's great. I mean, they've got it down, right? <laughs> they, they just know. They know how to be themselves and how to play and uh, and all of that. So I think there's a lot to be learned when we're around. Um, young children and and stuff so instead of that being an, a stress it can it can actually be they've got it right we have lessons to learn from them mm -hmm. and they're playing and they're being and the joy that they find and you know watching a ladybug right if you can just stop <laughs> for a minute can you imagine five minutes watch a ladybug i mean who does that <laughs> right but if that's joy that's being still that's getting out of your way and remembering mm. It's, it's almost like this freshness and this newness. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Innocent. yeah. Yeah. And, and, and an innocent spirit where, where as adults, I think we can, we can take things so seriously. Our mm. jobs, our home life. Mm. Yeah. we got a lot of responsibility mm. and there's no, a lot of adulting. <laughs> but, but means, right? you got to do the laundry got to pay the bills got to do all those things but there's no but it's making creating the space it's just creating those little pockets of space you know mm. that take those weights off um and just building those into your life so it's not a, another task but it's just something that you build into your day that creates a space that allows some of that joy to come up and and kind of helps you pace yourself for a busy day mm instead of ratcheting up, right? How many of us ratchet all the way up and then at four o'clock or five or six, we're trying to ratchet all the way back down, right? That's where that drink comes in. Caffeinate in the morning, da 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 and today, have a drink, try to calm yourself down. Yeah. yeah. It's a cycle. Yeah, it can really be a cycle, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was a phenomenal conversation. Um, I love it. I always love yeah. it. I I just have such a passion for bringing this personal and this work together. So anytime I can engage mm. with somebody that can show that those aren't separate, right? It's not like it's all, you know, woo-woo meditation over here and it's all corporate goals over here. You know, it's there's an in-between and there's a nice blending. And it's in that blending, I think people can transition better or feel better about naturally about coming from one space into another space in their life. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you for creating a great <laughs> thing for me today on that note. Now, oh, I'm, now I'm going to go seek out know, a, um, a ladybug. I have the desire to go find a ladybug. <laughs> right? I just go. go find a ladybug. <laughs> go outside. I, I was just outside a couple of minutes before we started and I saw Roly Roly Pulley. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it was cool. I was, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm doing it. You inspired me, Rich. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, Dale, I can tell that you provide so much value for businesses and, and individuals. So if people are like, 
Wow, Dale's awesome. How can they get a hold of you to learn more? That's great. You can find me on LinkedIn, um, just um, Dale Wickeiser on LinkedIn, or I have a website, intentionalresultsco.com. You can find me there, or I'm sure if they reach out to you, Rich, and they already are connected to you, they'll find me um, through that connection as well, which would be great. But I'm always open to talking to people. Sometimes the People just don't understand what they need or they are uncomfortable. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm always open to doing a, a free consultation to see if there's anything I can assist with, help you navigate um, if I'm the right person for you or not. Just to just to get that. The fact that you are thinking it is a great spot, a great spot to be in. Yeah, You recognize yeah. it. So, yeah. But yeah, that's great. I appreciate the time and the energy is always rich. It's a, it's always a lot of fun and it goes so fast. It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? I'm... <laughs> yeah, time to go. <laughs> no, we're, we're great. <laughs> All right. Well, again, I so appreciate your presence and your insights and you as a person. So, oh, awesome. Thanks. Thank you so much for having me, Rich. You have a lovely day. You too. All right. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Rich Life Realization Podcast. May these conversations help you experience your richest life. To contact me about being a guest on the podcast or about coaching, email me richliferealization at gmail.com or text or call 970-716-0075.